For number one, if data has a normal distribution, then the histogram will be bell-shaped. Now, this histogram is not bell-shaped. It is skewed to the left, so you could not use a normal distribution. To look at some examples of what a bell-shaped histogram would look like, you could look in the textbook. This is page 363. But a, a bell shape will have the peak in the middle, where the mean is, and it will be symmetric on both sides from that. And so if you go to the left of the mean, the amount of data will decrease. And if you go to the right of the mean, in a similar fashion, the amount of data will also decrease. For number two, this histogram is roughly bell-shaped. So we could use the normal distribution as a model for this variable. For number three, we have a normal curve here. And the mean is always the value right in the middle. Where the, where the curve peaks, and for this example, it's negative 16. And the standard deviation is always positive, and the standard deviations are marked for this curve. So there are these lines here. So from the mean, one standard deviation above the mean would be at this number here, which you can see is a gap of 2. So the standard deviation is 2. And if you go up to the next standard deviation, it's again by a gap of 2. And similarly, if you go lower than the mean, each standard deviation is two away from the previous one. For number four, we're finding area under the standard normal curve. And here's a picture of the standard normal curve. Remember that the mean is zero, and then the standard deviation is one. So that's marked on the graph here. And the first part of this problem is asking for the area to the left of z equals 1.35. So it's asking if we went 1.35 standard deviations away from the mean, so 1, and then 0.35, I'll estimate it's about right here. Draw a line. What is the area to the left of that line? So all the area, I'm coloring it in now. What's the area of this colored in part? And recall all the area under the entire curve would be 1 or 100%. So this should be pretty close to 100% because the only area that's left off is this little chunk here on the right tail end. So this is a visual picture of what we're trying to solve for. And now I'll come back and show how to do these. I will solve them using Excel. I really encourage you to view these instructor tips. There's a, some good videos in here. Uh, that show both Excel and StatCrunch. So if you haven't watched those yet, watch those. So I'll find the area to the left of these four values. So in Excel, here's the four values. And we would use the function, the formula, normal. And the easiest one to use for the standard normal distribution is norm.s. The dot .s stands for standard normal. And then distribution. So I'm going to select that one. And I just need to enter in the value that I want to find the left of. So I have them listed here. I'll use cell reference. And then you want to use true. Uh, it does the cumulative probability distribution function when you type in true. So if you do that, you get your answer. And like we said from the picture, that's pretty close to 1 or 100% of the area. So about 91% of the area is to the left of 1.35. So going back to Excel, if I just drag this cell down. Since I use cell reference, it'll calculate the probabilities for these other values as well. So you can see them all here. Um, you see this one's pretty small, about 5% is to the left of negative 1.59. And just let's look at that from a picture. Negative 1.59 would be about here. So that answer we got back is saying about 5% of the total area is to the left. If you go negative 1.59 standard deviations from the mean, there's only about 5% of the area to the left of that. Number five, again we're using the standard normal curve, but this time we're finding the area between two, uh, two z values. So for part a it's z equals negative 1.27 and positive 1.27. We're going to try to find the area between those values. 
So if you went to positive 1.27 standard deviations above the mean, and then negative 1.27 standard deviations below the mean. For part A, we're trying to find the area in between those data values, so this colored in part here. So how we're going to do that, think about how Excel works. When we tell it to give us the area to the left of a given value, it would give us this area, but then it also would give everything to the left. So it gives us this little extra chunk that we're not trying to calculate in this particular instance. But then if we asked Excel to give us the value to the left of this mark here, the negative 1.27, it would give us only this extra chunk that we don't need. So what we're going to do is ask Excel for the value to the left of this mark, the positive 1.27, and it'll give us all this area. And then all we need to do is subtract away this extra part we don't need. And we'll figure out how much that is by asking Excel how much is to the left of negative 1.27. And then what we do is we subtract that part away, and all we're left is the part in between. So let's look at that in action here with the numbers. Again, I'm using the formula equals norm.s for standard normal distribution, and then I use cell reference to refer to the negative 1.27, and you use the value true to do the cumulative normal distribution, which is what we want. And then I also need to do that for positive 1.27. And so I get my two values, one for negative, 1.27, one for positive. And like I said here in the picture, what we need to do is take that value from the positive 1.27, which gave us everything that's colored in now, and then subtract away that extra part. And that extra part's the value we get when we do the negative 1.27. So over here, I'm taking my value from the positive 1.27, and I'm subtracting my value from the negative 1.27. And when you do that, you get your answer here. Uh, there's about 79% of the area is between those two values. And using Excel, I can just, since I was using, using cell reference, I can just drag and drop those cells to do the next two parts of the problem. And you see between those two data values, we have about 5%. And between those two data values, we have about 10%. And you should always refer back to the graph to make sure your answers are making sense. 5% seems pretty small. Let's see what part of the graph we're actually referring to and see if maybe 5% makes sense or maybe it was an error. We typed something in wrong. So our data values were between... Uh, negative 0.15 and 0. Negative 0.15 and 0. So if we go to negative 0.15, well, here's negative 0.5. So negative 0.15, probably pretty close to right there. And then 0 is marked here, and 0. Okay, so that is just a really tiny sliver. So it makes sense that only 5% of the data is in between those two data values because the area that we're talking about is that really tiny sliver 0.5%.